This time it's the turn of MCAS, Microsoft Cloud App Security. We're going to discover what it is and more importantly how it works. Welcome to this week's All You Need to Know. Hi there, I'm Andy Malone. I'm a Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. You know, you may have deployed devices in your environment um, for your users. You may have deployed applications on those devices. In many cases, though, you'll find that um, many users have also installed their own apps from their own app stores, quite rightly, too. But one of the problems with that is if you're combining corporate applications with personal applications, you often don't know what those other applications on the device are actually doing. For example, that 10-pin bowling game, why does it need access to your camera, your contacts, your microphone? So you need to be aware of the risks of applications. And this is exactly one of the features that MCAS provides. It's a risk uh, environmental tool. And what it does is it, it basically contains a catalog of every single mobile application. And more than that, it actually provides a risk score. So that's the first thing you can decide by using that, whether you're going to allow that application to run in your environment. Secondly, it's also an investigation tool. So are there any anomalies, behavioral anomalies? So why is that user logging in on a Saturday evening and downloading large amounts of data from your network? That's not right. So you need to have something proactive in order to fight security. But more than that, um, you can not just investigate, you can audit users. It's a fantastic security tool. And in fact, I feel a demo coming up. Let's take a look. So here I am in Cloud App Security. And what we can see, this is our main uh, kind of dashboard. And you can see these cards are just giving an overview of everything that's going on. But really, as I mentioned, Cloud App Security is three main tools, well, four main tools. So the first part is I'm going to go flip over here and take a look at the Cloud Discovery Dashboard. And indeed, you can see here that it's quite busy. I've discovered 293 applications, which are talking to 1,841 IP addresses. Um, I'm, I've got 457 users in my organization and they're generating about 2.9 gigs of data. You can see the, the uh, app categories, cloud storage is obviously one of the biggest ones here. And you can see here the risk levels, what we refer to as our risk levels. Um, most of it's green, a little bit yellow, and there's a little bit of red there that we'll come back to. Down here, you can see your top users. So who are those top users that are using, uh, generating most data uh, within your organization? And again, you've got your discovered app categories here. So which are the busiest application categories? And you can see here, where are they coming from around the world? So quite a few in the United States, some in Switzerland, some in Russia, some in China, some in Australia. So they're coming in uh, all over the place. And what this is doing, first of all, we'll talk about the discovery. So the discovery apps, basically you have a cloud app catalog, as I mentioned earlier. And the cloud app catalog contains details of every single app anywhere on any device. And you can see that the cloud app is scored. Uh, if I uh, break it down, you can see this uh, a score of 10 means it's been gone through lots of testing and evaluation. It, it supports certi digital certificates. You can see that compliance, it's SOC com compliant, ISO compliant, GDPR uh, compliant. So if you've got an application with a score of 10, then of course it's gonna be pretty good. Um, so of course, bearing in mind that 10 means that there's very little risk, uh, I can then say, okay, I want to filter, let's say my applications, uh, let's say with a score of three or less. So a score of three or less could indicate that, let's say, for example, the you can see the difference here, 
that there really isn't any compliance. There isn't any kind of legal um, security built into these things. So again, from a security standpoint, as an administrator, security administrator on a network, I would find that a little bit concerning. So what I'm going to do is go back to my discovery dashboard and let's investigate this. So uh, you can see that most applications here are fairly benign. Um, I do have a few red ones. So I'm going to go ahead and click on those red applications. And you can see here that a few of them have popped up. So I've got this application here called Status Cake. So let's have a look at Status Cake. And as I can see, um, it it's a you know doesn't look very good. It, it tells me a little bit about the company when they were launched. Um, but you can see there's no admin trail, there's no audit trail here, it doesn't remember passwords. Um, it does have a certificate, it doesn't support SAML. Um, in terms of compliance, there is no legal compliance and there's no legal, for example, they don't have a GDPR uh, data policy. So, you know, if I was an administ a security administrator, um, would you really want this application running on your user's mobile device? So if you decide that no, I don't, you can either sanction the app, say yes, it's fine, or you can what we call unsanction that app, and you can do that here as well. So I can say I don't want that app sanctioned on my network. So if users try and run this app, they're going to get an, they're going to get an error message basically. Okay, so that's the first thing um, about cloud app security. You can decide on what are the risky apps and you can choose whether to sanction them or uh, not sanction them. So that's the first thing. So very powerful. And you can do things like, you can do clever things like generate reports and all kinds of stuff as well. Um, another uh, component is investigation. So uh, I've got an in, uh, an investigation log here. So I can go into the investigation log and it shows me everything. So everything, every time a user logs in, every time an application runs, um, I can um, go into a, you know, I can see that, for example, Alan's logged on here. So I can go in and I can click onto this log on and it shows me where he's logged on from, the device that he's logging on from, what application, um, he's accessing um, and up here I can view all his other activity um, I can view activity from the user so I'll click in and it gives me a complete report of everything that the user has done um, uh, again you can also view um, view activity from the same IP address. So if you suspected that this user was identity theft or something like that, and it's coming in from an unknown location, you might want to investigate that. Um, again, uh, you can see the region and also the, uh, all, the, all the user's activities within a specific frame time frame type rather. So I can uh, have a look at the user. It shows me where the user's coming in from, data information on the user, and also the user's IP address here. Uh, I can see uh, other IP address actions. I can whitelist this user. I can black this user. I can determine whether it's a VPN. Now, if it is the user, um, I again, you can do kind of user actions as well. So I can see all the related activity from that user. I can view the user's files if I wanted to. Although I'd like to point out it's only the metadata. You can't read the files. Um, you can view any files that are shared with the user. So it might be inappropriate. I can go in and view the users as your Active Directory. So their, their account settings if I want to. Um, I might suspect that the user's account has been compromised. So I can confirm that or I can suspend the user. So a very, very powerful uh, set of tools to go off and do an investigation with. And this is, I'm just stroking the surface, of course, with this little demo here. Um, so you can, the next thing then is you might want to control. So to control and out of the box, we have what we call policies and you can build these policies from a whole set of templates and in actual fact these policies are are generally out of the box actually 
And what these are is these are rules. So malicious OAuth app uh, consent. So if somebody's consenting on behalf of your organization to a malicious application, um, you know, things like log on from a risky IP address. Um, if somebody's downloading mass numbers of files on a Friday night, I would want to know about it. Um, things like um, if you're uh, unusual uh, administrative activity, um, if you're logging on from an, um, uh, let's say, impossible travel. So if you've just logged on here in London and then 15 minutes later you log on from Tokyo, that's impossible travel. There's something wrong there. So that tells me that these chances are it's a compromised account. So uh, again, you can then go into that. I can have a look at this particular rule. It tells me who's it affecting. Um, so you can do a, a configuration on that. You can Then you can say, send me an alert by email or send a text message to the administrator. And that's the great thing about this. If something happens, something, something goes wrong, I want to know immediately that there is something wrong. And this is fantastic. Okay, and you can do governance actions about those apps. You can force the user to reset their password and, uh, and things like that as well. So these policies are incredibly powerful. So of course, how do you get notified? You get notified by alerts. So you can see that, uh, again, we have a whole bunch of alerts here. Uh, you can create alerts. Um, and these alerts, uh, you can uh, build alerts based on, um, for example, rules. So you can create your own rules. Um, you can, um, you, can um, you know, is it an alert based on a user action or, or something like that? So uh, again, activity from an IP address. Uh, and it tells me, you know, you know, it was Alan. Alan logged on and uh, and a and an IP address that you're not familiar with. So you can then say, okay, I can dismiss it. I can, you know, it, it's fine. It's it's um it's it's acceptable. Or you might want to go off and do a little bit more investigation. So maybe Alan's account has been compromised, for example. All right. So you can see that cloud app security, incredibly powerful set of tools. And it also fully integrates with tools like Azure Sentinel, uh, Microsoft's SEM system, security event and incident management, as well as other things like um, Azure Threat Protection. So, um, you know, virus, malware, um, inappropriate user actions. Um, all these tools are set up to protect your users in Microsoft 365. In terms of licensing, by the way, you get Cloud App Security um, an E5 with an E5 uh, and also EMNS, Enterprise Mobility and Security. Um, it's also part of an E3 as well, but you get a slightly cut down version, but you can also purchase it as a standalone product. We okay. have it. Cloud App Security. I hope you, you're a little more knowledgeable and you're a little wiser about it now. If you've enjoyed this session, go ahead and click on that subscribe button on there. And I hope to see you next time on All You Need to Know. Thank you again. I'm Andy Malone. Have a great day.